Well, hey guys, I hope you are doing really good today. I want to share with you something, a lesson that I've come up with. This is something I've been taught, I've been thinking about for a little bit, and I really think this is going to be uh, super powerful for you. This is something I do with our coaching, uh, with my coaching clients, but it's a little bit step beyond, it's a little one step beyond what I've been doing with them, and I think it's super powerful. I hope you'll stay in this. I think it's going to be it's probably going to be about a 45 to 50 minute lesson. Super powerful. So stay with me here. It's called the creative power of your I am. And that looks, I don't know what is coming across on your computer, your screen there, but it looks backwards, but it's your I am statements. And believe it, every single one of us have some form of an I am statement. And what follows that I am is uh, pretty powerful. We'll talk about that. So this is a lesson that I've created. Um, I hope uh, I hope it adds value to you. Stay here with me. And hey, at the end of this, feel free to share this with a friend or family member. Uh, give me a comment. Reach out to me on social media. But you can also feel free to email me anytime at Corey, C-O-R-Y, at CoreyLeeLeadership.com. I'd love to hear your feedback. But I believe this is going to be something that's truly powerful for you. So. Um, so when I, when I work one-on-one -on -one with an individual, the very first thing we do is we create this six-month vision. And we do this, it is very powerful because a lot of people um, don't really know what it is they want. So we try to get crystal clear on what it is um, that they want. And, you know, we can... The main point is we really want to be intentional about how we live out this gift of life that we have. We can create it by design or we can live life on autopilot and live by default. And we really want to be intentional with the gift that God has given us. And I love the quote by George Washington Carver. And this is what George Washington Carver said. He said, um, no individual has any right, has any right to come into the world and go out of it without leaving behind some distinct and legitimate reason for having passed through it. And I love that, right? So, so we get really intentional by writing out a very clear six month vision. But once we do that, the very next step we want to create is an understanding uh, of our creative power that we have been created by God, by God, the God who spoke and poof, <laughs> there were stars in the skies and, and the guy who spoke and poof, grass sprouted up and, and the oceans were filled with water and they were given their boundaries. Well, that God, that God created you and that God created me and he wants a relationship with us and he also wants to express himself in, with, and through us. So when we say that we can co-create with God, what does that really mean? What does that mean? So I, I want to show you this. Um, some of you that are familiar with uh, some of the teachings that I've done, some of the trainings that I've done, you may be familiar with this stick person behind me. This is not my teaching. This is what I've been taught by my mentors, um, Paul Martinelli and Roddy Galbraith. It's something that they've been taught as well. But you can see, um, let this represent our mind, our mind, and then this represents our body. I don't think I'd be a good weather person uh, pointing this stuff. but. Um, as you can see, uh, this is our mind. We've got the mind split up into two. In this top part, that's our uh, conscious mind. That's our thinking mind, right? And, and the bottom part here, this is our subconscious mind. That's our feeling mind. So we have these two parts, and there are two very different parts. In the top part, our mind, this is where we, we choose which thoughts, right? We, we have the ability to choose our thoughts. Uh, this is where our free will lies. This is um, our ability to choose what we think on. And in this part of the mind, we can accept any thought or reject any thought that we want to. Now, in our subconscious mind, this is our feeling mind and our emotional mind. This is where our identity lies, right? This is where our self-belief lies. This is where our self-image is as well. So that's just a generality that's boom, right to the point, I teach on this for a long time, but just to kind of give you a gist of it. But, but we can think of the conscious mind as trying to keep us focused on the what and the how, right? The what and the how, what am I going to do and how am I going to do it? What am I going to do and how am I going to do it? Um, and, 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 and it, this focuses 
this thinking mind focuses very much on the doing part of who we are. Now, the subconscious mind, it's more focused on the being side, our beingness, right? Our doing and our being right there. This is where our self-image is, and this is the image we think the world has of us. It's not just the image we hold of ourselves, but also the image we think the world has of us, how the world sees us. And in this portion of our mind, the subconscious mind is also where our self-esteem lies, our self-value, how I value me and how I perceive how the world values me as well. Then this is also where our self-belief lies, the things we think are important to us, our values, uh, those kind of things. And when we take these three, our self-image, our self-esteem and our self-image, these combine to create our self-identity. And that, that's where we seek to express this self-identity. And one of the ways we do that is through I am statements. And that's what this entire video and audio is about today. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. When I, when I say that we speak into existence our results, this is, um, there is great power great power in our words, particularly the words that follow uh, through us uh, that come from deep within us, right? The words that flow through us. And uh, Jesus said, you know, he said, um, those things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And I can remember when I first started studying leadership and, and personal growth, uh, my initial purpose was really um, out of fear. We had just, just, um, hired our first team member. We had a business and we had hired our first team member. And I, I knew, I knew the decisions that I made no longer just affected me and my family, but now the decisions I made, now they affected somebody else's family. And it kind of made me nervous. So out of fear, I realized I needed to grow and to develop. And that's, that's what started me down this, this journey. And I, I was afraid to make big mistakes, right? That, that's what really started me on that. And, um, um, and, and as I started down this personal growth and development lane, you know, you hear where well, you got to set goals. You're supposed to set goals. You got to know what you want and those kind of things. And you need to know what you want, which was, it was kind of difficult. I, I could easily tell what I did not want, right? They'd ask, what do you want? What do your goals want to be? And it's easy for me to come up with all the things that I didn't want. And after coaching and training a few years now, that's really what most people come with. You ask them what they want and they easily respond with all the things that they don't want. They quickly say, well, I don't want this and I don't want that. But that's not the question, right? The question is, what do you want? So a while back, I was working with this guy and I asked him a question. And um, now this question this question is meant to work on the self image, right? So I said to, uh, I said to him, tell me about yourself. And part of his response was, I'm broke. <laughs> I'm broke. Listen to those words. I am broke. I am broke broke. See, that was his attempt to describe the financial status he was in. And I also said, uh, he also said, I'm beat. I am beat. That, that was his uh, way of explaining how physically tired he was from working all the long hours. And for me, I would make the mistake and, uh, you know, I'd mess up and I would, I would say, I'm so stupid so stupid, such an idiot, right? That's exactly the words that would come out of my mouth without even thinking about it. So stupid, so stupid, such an idiot. Now check it out, right? This process of growth that we are all in is all about awareness and not judgment. So I would say, I'm so dumb <laughs> or I'm so stupid as a way to describe my mistakes instead of saying I have poor judgment right there, right? And as a quick side note here, I, I, this is important too. Uh, quick side note, you can do this to other people as well. So we've got three kids. We have an eight, five, and three-year-old. And our three-year-old, um, <laughs> he's very much like me. He's kind of set in his ways. It's, it's his way or the highway. And even when we were uh, potty training him, it, it had to be his choice, right? It had to be his choice. He has to do things his way. And um, he'd often be at school and 
they have this color code. If you're on green, that's great. If you're on yellow, that's not so good. You got into trouble one time and red, that's, hey, you got in trouble multiple times and, and it goes down from there. But he would often be on red most of the time, sometimes on yellow, rarely on green, right? And we got into this habit of all saying, Brady, you're being so bad. That's horrible, right? That's horrible to say. Brady, why are you being so bad? Brady, you're so mean, right? Why are you being so mean to the other kids? And our, our older two kids, they would they would kind of jump in as well and say, Brady, you're being so mean. And, and that's all he's hearing is you're so mean. You're, you're so bad. And I, as I started growing, right? And, and I actually woke up to actually what we were actually saying. I started to change that. And he I picked him up one day and he was on red and I said, Brady, wow, why were you on, why were you on red? That you're, you're a green boy. Why? I don't understand. You're such a good boy. You're, you're a green boy. I don't know why you're on red. And over time, my attitude changed for sure, but his attitude as well. And he is pretty much uh, always on green now, but our words have such power to ourselves, but also to other people. And what we say, because you hear the word, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? And and don't let that that weird you out. But but think about that word, self-fulfilling prophecy. We kind of just let it roll off our tongue. We really um, don't understand the power of our own words. Or we'll hear people say, I'm overwhelmed. I am overwhelmed. And really what they're defining is their state of confusion or or their lack of clarity or their lack of purpose. And I just have to say this, um, this, this subconscious, this subconscious part of our mind, it's cunning. It, it really is. It's really cunning. But this is really dangerous talk when we claim an I amness. And for me, I go back to when Jesus claimed his I amness and the power in that. So you had these, you think about that time, you had these religious rulers who didn't, they didn't like Jesus, right? They didn't like him. They were always trying to trap him in his words, like uh, when they brought the adulterous woman there and they brought him at his feet. And uh, Jesus said, well, the person without, without sin, you know, you cast the stone first. But they were always trying to trap him and they didn't like him. But it really, it really wasn't until he claimed his I amness, he claims his I amness, that they moved from this kind of, it's a rock in our shoe that's just a nuisance that's kind of gathering a bunch of followers to pure hate, right? Pure hate to really trying to kill the guy now, right? He, he claims his I amness and says he is, that he is the son of God, right? That he's the son of God and he's no longer just this nuisance. Now somebody they want to kill, right? Jesus claims his I am and Jesus then tells the people that, that believe in him, that greater things they will be able to do and tells people there's an I amness to them as well. And I tell you, I, I tell you, these two words, I am, are powerful words. They're, they're creative words. They're defining words. So whenever you say I am, whatever follows your subconscious mind, boom, like that, boom, immediately takes it as a directive. So when you say I am broke, when you say I am overwhelmed, when you say I am stupid, when I say I am dumb, remember your subconscious mind has no ability to reject any thought or idea. It it, it won't ask you to clarify, did you mean to say that you were dumb and stupid or should I just take that? No, it, it cannot reject it. It has to accept whatever is passed on to it. So, um, uh, you know, it, it, it has no ability to reject that. It won't ask you to clarify. And it can't tell the difference between something real or imagined. And that's huge. Just imagine. I mean, I've told myself, I'm dumb. I'm stupid. I'm such an idiot. Thousands of times. And here's what happens is my subconscious mind, it automatically tries to create those circumstances and conditions. My friend, that, that, <laughs> that is powerful stuff. So we claim the I amness of I am broke or I 
am stupid. Your subconscious mind takes that as an order and as your identity. It has no ability to separate that from your being. It has no ability to separate your being from your behavior. And again, it, it immediately, like that, boom, boom, like that. It takes us as, as an order. And that's when we misuse these statements, when, when we don't speak truth, when we don't speak the truth. Instead of saying, I'm broke, I mean, we could easily speak the truth. And, and the strategy that I've used and I've taught is, is to use the phrase, up until now, right? So instead of saying, I'm broke, we change that to, up until now, I've lacked the resources to be or to do or to have the things that I want in my life. And up until now, right? See, the truth is I'm changing that and there's power in catching ourselves in that, right? But, but this, is a, this is a little different. It, it's somewhat outside of our comfort zone and uh, what we know, what, what we are familiar with, right? I, ha I have this training I do on the five barriers to reaching your potential. And, and one of those barriers comes when we set goals. And, and the mistake is that we set goals based on what we already know we can accomplish, right? And I've, I've gone all over and taught that. And I've taught that in many different settings. But, but the teaching there is that anytime we step outside of our comfort zone to create something beyond the conditions and circumstances we have, it, let's just use money, right? So let's just say money. Let's say you set a goal that you know you can do and there's no real inspiration there. So you know, maybe, maybe you're making $40,000 a year. And you take a look around, you look around the world and you look around at your marketplace and you know you can make 45. So that's the goal. That, that becomes the new goal is $45,000 this year. But, but that 45, that extra 5,000 is really growth beyond your current 40. And as soon as you step outside of your zone of knowing, as soon as you step outside of your zone of, of comfort, and you have to do things you've never done before. You have to meet the people you've never met before and travel to places you've never been before, think in ways you've never thought before, change your habits, and, and you've never, these habits that you've never developed and, and access resources and skills that you haven't accessed before. As soon as you do that, you're probably going to fail, right? That's what most of us do is we fail, and, and we don't like to fail. Nobody likes to fail, and typically when we fail, there's, you know, some kind of loss, right? Uh, maybe a loss of time, maybe a financial loss, or maybe maybe even um, a, a loss of social status. And I think we can um, we can all agree, right? We can all agree that there's some negative side to failure. And if the reward isn't great enough, then why even stay, right? Why even stay in that place of failure? You wouldn't want to, right? You wouldn't want to stay long there. So, so if you're going to set a goal, the goal has to be big enough to inspire you to go through this pain process instead of falling back into what's familiar, right? And look, <clears throat> we all do this. We do. We do this all the time. You'll, you'll hear people say, well, I, I just, you know, I just like the things, I like things just the way they are right? I like things just the way they are. And, and I'm telling you, when, when we say that, or we hear people say that, they are claiming their ignorance to the laws of growth. See, we create patterns of living from this I amness. So, so now that you are aware of this, now you know this, I just want you to really encourage you. And uh, I hope it motivates you and, and really get you to think it, but I really want to, to encourage you just for the rest of the week, just this week, whenever you listen to this, whenever you see this, for the rest of the week, pay close attention. Pay close attention to what you are speaking into existence, right? Pay really, really close attention to it. Start being aware of what you're aware of. Pay really close attention to what you are, what you're saying and what your I am's are. I mean, we do this by default. We don't even think about it. It just becomes a pattern of thinking. We don't even know we're doing it. So, so I want to share with you six key points right here, right? So six key points for you to intentionally, uh, to be intentional and to use this creative power for your good, right? So first, first <clears throat> it's being a, a part of a community. I, I think that's key is being part of a community and, and having associations with like-minded people who encourage you. And it, it's really a matter of working with our intellectual faculties. And one of these 
intellectual faculties that we talk about is perception. So we can perceive our outside world. We can begin to shift how we define an I am. So instead of I am broke, instead of saying I am broke, we can speak the truth and be around other people who have committed to growth and, and really putting yourself in an environment conducive to growth uh, will help. So this is, this is something um, you have to do yourself, right? You have to do this yourself but you don't have to do it alone. And honestly, I mean, you can't do it alone. You gotta do it for yourself, but you can't do it alone. So being a part of a group or having a coach or a mentor, someone who can hold you accountable and speak truth into you, who support you in the idea uh, is, is first step. And what's interesting is we all think that our way of thinking is the way that everyone thinks. And if, if you're just, on your own, you know, you think your thinking is right. And we tend to think everyone thinks just like us. Everybody thinks just like me. And, but, but it's not until you get around other people, you start to think, well, <laughs> uh, maybe I'm not seeing the, and, and it kind of rubs off and you get new ideas, right? It's where a lot of creativity comes from. So, uh, really having a group, a community or somebody to speak into you and be, uh, I want to be cautious there. Um, the power of a community or somebody to speak into you is very powerful, but you want to be mindful of who it is that you allow to speak into you. Okay. So that, that's strategy number one. So strategy number two is operating from this level of awareness rather than judgment and, and stop keeping score against yourself, right? So we want to be kind to ourselves. You want to be kind to yourself. So here's a strategy I use when I catch myself using an I am that doesn't really serve me. You know, it's, <laughs> think about this. It's kind of, it's kind of funny. Um, I would, I would uh, mess up and I would say I'm stuck. And then I, I Doggone it. I call myself, I'm such an idiot. I'm so stupid. <laughs> so, you know, now I'm interrupting that. And isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Again, the strategy is, isn't that interesting? You know, if you're listening to this or you're watching this, and if I were to say to you, isn't this video interesting? <laughs> isn't this video interesting? Your attention, it, it immediately is drawn to something outside of yourself. It's immediately drawn to something outside of you. And that's what happens when you use this strategy of, isn't that interesting? See, when we catch ourselves saying something, we use this phrase of, of hmm, isn't that interesting? It, it, it forces this subconscious part of our mind, the subconscious part of our mind, it forces it to look outside of ourselves and it separates our being from our behavior. And the second part of that is you want to catch yourself with that. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> and uh, you immediately want to rephrase it. So when you say, oh, man, you know, I'd love to go out to dinner, but I'm broke. I'm telling you, do not let those words stand unchallenged, even to the person you just said them to. And, and don't worry because of, you know, it, you may be embarrassed or something like that. Don't, don't worry because... It, of that embarrassment, just say, you know what? No, 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 no. Let me just correct that. Up until now, I just haven't been able to, to, to access the resources, the financial means to be able to do that. And I'm working on it, right? I'm working on it and it's getting better every single day. Immediately speak the truth because the truth <laughs> will set you free. And when you catch yourself not speaking the truth, create a new I am. You know what? Here, here's a really good one. When, when you catch yourself saying anything mm -hmm. money related, right? Anything about money that comes from a scarcity or a limitation. One of the I am's that I use is I'm creating multiple streams of income. I'm creating multiple streams of income. I'm creating multiple streams of income, income through which money can flow to me. Freeze freely, easily, quickly, rapidly, and abundantly. As I'm saying that, isn't it interesting that as I'm, I'm saying that, I'm, I'm speaking that, boom, new opportunity to partner in real estate comes along, boom, new opportunities to speak and coach and present uh, 
they come along. Boom, new opportunities for business start to appear. And, I, and I'm just telling you guys, this is powerful stuff, right? This is super powerful stuff if you buy into it. So that's number two. Number three, and we're, we're about to get into some really good stuff here. So uh, I, I think step three, to really living from this empowered I am creative state, uh, number three would be be the commitment, right? It's the willingness to make change a priority in your life, to make the commitment to growth. It's, it's moving beyond just hearing what I'm saying in this video or audio or, uh, and making the time to do what I'm telling you to do is what, what you're making the commitment to, is, is doing what I'm telling you to do, right? And what I've done and what I've seen other people do to have success. And, and, and I'm telling you, this is not hocus pocus. This is not just some new age mumbo jumbo crazy talk. This is legit, but you must make the commitment, right? I love the quote. Um, it goes like, until one is committed, there's hesitancy a chance to draw back. And here, here's why I think growth is so important is I've already told you we have three kids. Our oldest son, he's eight <clears throat> and he's in the third grade and I'm doing his math homework with him. And as I'm doing his math homework with him, I realized that, you know, I remember learning some of this stuff in high school, right? He's learning in third grade. Some of the things that I was learning in high school and Here's why that is important is it, it, making the commitment to growth is important because if you're not committed to your own growth and development, it's not that you're, you're standing still. My friend, you are getting left behind because uh, that's not just happening in education where things are, things are changing rapidly and education uh, is, is progressing. That's happening in every single industry. So if you're not growing, you are getting left behind. And John Maxwell says that if you're not growing, then you are today all you will ever be. Think about that. So number four. Number four, it really directly comes from this very first uh, exercise we do in coaching where we start to create this six-month vision where we define exactly what it is that you want and what you would like to accomplish. And, and, and when we do it, um, we think about this creative, uh, this vision statement. Think, we, we think through it. Now, this is just one of the things that you can do in, in a process that I did is, is a starting point is you write out with as much detail as you can, the person you would need to be in order to be, uh, to bring that forward, that six month vision, you're getting as, as detailed as you can and thinking through who do I need to be in order to bring that forward. And, and it, in other words, if you were to take your statement, a six month vision statement, and we could just, wave our magic wand and all of that is now fully present in your life and you're operating from that, that level of awareness, who would you be? What would be the I am's that would be evidence in your life? What would be the I am's that would be present in your life, right? Remember that, that the purpose of a goal is not to get the goal. The purpose of a goal is to become the person who can bring it forward. And so, so you're writing out this vision, and that's great. That's great. But the purpose of that desire statement, the, the purpose of having a goal, the purpose of having a, having a purpose and a vision and a goal, the purpose of those things is to cause you to grow to become the person, is to cause you to have the I amness, to have the being, right? It, it's not about getting not about getting the things. It's about raising your level of awareness to be in harmony with the type of person you need to be in order to have that vision. So when I, <clears throat> I when I first started thinking about this, I wanted to be a uh, <laughs> I wanted to be a world class teacher and trainer. That that's one of the things that was on my my goal card, right? And I had an I am statement that said, I am a great connector. I'm articulate, I'm creative, I'm energetic, I'm all of these things. And then I realized I'm famous. If, if I were a world-class speaker, then I'm famous. I'm smart. I'm rich. And, I, you know, I have to be super honest with you that when I began to write those kind of things out, when I wrote those I am's out, <laughs> 
there was big time static there, big time resistance, right? There, there was some serious resistance there because there's a part of me, my subconscious mind, that, that the idea of me being famous, <laughs> me being rich, me being smart, there were no cells of recognition in my self-image and in my self-esteem and in my self-belief and in my identity as I was writing out, I am famous, I am rich, and I'm trying to claim that as an identity, as a beingness, big time resistance, right? I would hear, hear you know, in my mind, <laughs> who do you think you are, right? No, you're not. Are you kidding me? No, you're not. So here's what I encourage you to do, right? Each, each uh, I am statement is an idea. So this idea that I am famous or I am smart or I'm rich, that's an idea. Now that idea we call a thought and we know that thought is energy. We know that thought is energy and we can put electrodes on your head, right? We can put these electrodes on your head and we can measure your brain waves and your thought waves. We know this and it's been measured. You can look it up in scientific research, right? We know that we can take a picture of it and we can capture the color and the density and of that energy and we know that when the ideas and the thoughts of a human being change in their mind, that when it changes, that, that the color also changes, the density changes, and that energy changes. So your I am statement, I'm rich, I'm successful, I'm worthy, whatever it is for you, if there's a part of you that says, no, you're not, no, you're not, <clears throat> recognize, first off, you're working with an idea, and an idea is a thought. And a thought is energy because this idea, this I am statement is energy. It's functioning under all the laws of energy. So check it out, right? <clears throat> energy is 100% evenly present in all places at all times. I, I, I can at this very moment, I can close my eyes. I can close my eyes and I can go forward in time and I can see myself famous. Remember, this subconscious part of our mind, remember, it has no ability to reject the idea and the experiences, whether it's real or imagined, whether it's real or imagined. So check this out. I could actually go, I could close my eyes and I can see myself on the stage. I can see myself wealthy and serving. I can feel that feeling. What would it feel like for me? What would it feel like for me to be famous? I mean, to to be on a stage and to motivate and encourage people or working with people one-on-one -on -one and seeing their lives change to, to have people line up and ask me for my autograph or to take pictures with me. What would that feel like? How would I feel? How would I feel if, if I were rich? Not what, not what would I be doing, but how would I feel, right? So I can go, I can go to that future state and I, I can anchor that in me. Then I can come back into the full presence of the awareness of this life and I can claim that I amness because even though it may not be present here in the physical form, we know that simultaneously we live on three planes of existence, right? We know that, we know that we're spiritual beings. We know that we're gifted with an intellect and we know that we're living in a physical body. See, everything you see, this table, this this camera, this computer and this microphone and everything you see first started as a thought, as an idea. Everything's created twice. So first in the mind of an individual and, and it's a lawful process. It's not, I'm telling you, it's not hocus pocus. <laughs> you, my friend, are not a scam. You are not a fraud. And I'm telling you, I was in this place of self-judgment when I would say I'm wealthy or I'm smart or I'm famous. The first man, I don't know, a <clears throat> hundred times I would think that, that such a fraud, right? Such a fraud because I didn't have the awareness that I have now. You know, honestly, I didn't even tell my wife about these I am statements because she knows me best. And then my own self judgment, I would think she would call me a fraud too, right? Just like the thoughts that were in my mind were telling me. But as I've grown and what I'm telling you that changed. And here's the deal. The moment you claim your I amness, boom, it's done. It's done in the mind of God. Like, where do you, where do you think you got the idea from in the first place? Right? Where do you think ideas come from? Who do you think ideas come from? Now, 
now what I can do from this place, well, I, I, can, I can then begin to live my life knowing what this future state and what that feeling is like, knowing what this emerging future energy is. And I can begin to look in my life. I can look around. I can start to find the people. I can find the relationships that aren't a match right? I can spend less time with those people. I can find the things all around me, things in my home that aren't a match. I can look at my habits and behavior and my thinking, those things that are not a match, and they'll begin to come into your awareness as well. And when, and when they do, here's, here's the deal. Be gentle on yourself and say, wow, isn't that interesting? As I'm trying to grow and change, isn't it interesting that this old, this old habit right here continues to try to presence itself. Isn't that interesting? I'm so thankful, right? I'm so happy and I'm so thankful that I'm operating from a higher level of awareness that up until now, I used to tell myself that I wasn't these things when I know that my birthright from God is dominion over all things. Thank you, Father. Claim your truth. Claim it. Claim your truth. My, uh, my mentor, Paul, Martin, uh, Paul Martinelli, he was sharing a story one day uh, of how he had, a, had this same kind of thing. He had this vision statement, and one of his vision statements was being an international speaker. And um, one time he was in, in Romania speaking for the, some company, and he didn't realize, you know, he was speaking that this company – that they had hired him, they, they had bought everybody there, those thousands of people, bought everybody there some of his CDs. And he said whenever he finished up this whole eight-hour day of training, he had a, had a um, interpreter there, and that kind of stuff is just exhausting. And he said when he finished up, the guys who were putting on this, this speaking engagement stood up and said, hey, everybody, look under your chair, and we've given you one of Paul's CDs, right? And you know what? Paul's going to sign them for you. <laughs> Paul's going to sign them for you. And Paul's like, what? Are you, what? So, it, you know, he's exhausted. He's tired. And now they're going to sign these CDs. And people come up to him with their pens and wanting him to sign, sign their CDs. And they're all these Romanian people, right? They're not, they're not named Jim or Bob or Billy, right? They're, they're like, like Vladimir and, and Costanza, right? So he's, just, so he's trying to write their, their names out and he says he's a horrible speller and he tells everybody to write their own names down so he doesn't misspell it. And that, that kind of comes back to that Dale Carnegie thing where, um, you know, the most precious word in any language is a person's name. So he didn't really want to mess that up. And then he says he, he caught himself. Interesting, right? He said he caught himself. He, he was in a state of frustration, but then he caught himself and he said, this, this is my vision. This, this right here is what I've been praying for. I mean, this has been my vision. I created this. I am famous. So think through what your vision is. And what are some of the I am statements around what you would be if you were already in possession of that vision? Okay, so... <clears throat> Let's move on to number five. So what we then do is once we've identified what our purpose, our vision, our goal is, and once we've identified what we would need to be, and we write out this um, I am, these I ams, we write out these I ams that we would be present in our life, that we would be. Remember, this, this is all about being, right? This is all about being. Uh, this has nothing to do with the doing side of goal achievement. This is a lesson on being. So how... How do you be the person that brings this dream forward in your life? So you identify what it is that you want. You build this image. You build this mental model of what it looks like, boom, already done, right? And you travel to that place in your mind's eye. You use your inter intuition. You use your imagination, right? Remember, there, there are six intellectual faculties, um, I teach on this in depth in several other programs, but you have six, you have memory, you have will, reason, intuition, perception, and imagination. So you've got perception, you've got reason, you've got will, imagination, intuition, and memory. So you've got these six intellectual faculties and you use your intuition, you use your imagination, you build the model of what your life looks like complete and done right? You see it, you feel it, and then you write out the, these I am statements. 
Then what you do is you go to work building this model. You actually see yourself living it and you bring forward the vision. You um, kind of like playing it out as a movie, right? You bring this I am alive in you in different scenarios, in different pictures. And this moves it to where you begin to anchor it, right? So you, so you write out these I am's, you write whatever they are, and then you begin to anchor it. And I'm telling you, the way I found uh, the best way to anchor it is you do it in front of a mirror. So you have your I am statements all written out on a piece of paper, and you stand up in front of your mirror, and you identify the I am's. So <clears throat> I would look at my paper and say, I am rich. Then you look directly into the mirror, you look directly into it, and you say, I am rich. Then you close your eyes and you bring that memory forward. You access the stored memory. Remember, you can you might be accessing a memory from when you were five or ten or fifteen or twenty years old, or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60, you might be accessing the memory from the future. But either way, you are remembering the energy from either the past or remembering the energy from our emerging future. And we're beginning that forward and we're, we're bringing that forward and we're anchoring the words, I am rich. I am successful. I am am worthy. I am famous. And as we say them, we close our eyes, we bring forward the picture, we fill it, right? We fill it and we anchor it. Then we look at the next one. So we would look at something like, now Now you just, so you know, these are these are some of mine, right? So I've, I've written them on the board here if you're looking at this, but <clears throat> I'm an expert in leadership. I am successful. I am bold. I am courageous. I'm a miner of talent and extractor of potential. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. I am unique. I'm a connector. I'm a communicator. I am rich. And each time I'm saying that to myself, I'm speaking directly. Remember, you're speaking, you're writing, and you're anchoring it to you. And one of us, one of us can do this. Any one of us can do this. If I can do it, you can do it, right? It, this, this costs you no money. It doesn't cost you any money. You're getting this lesson for free. It, 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 you can do this exercise for free, right? But it's going to cost you your time, right? And here's funny. I'll have people, and I know it's going to happen. I know it will. Is that people are going to say, I know what you said to do, but you know what I did? Let me tell you what I did. What I did was I put them on a PowerPoint, and then I started click through them, boom, 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 real quick, and I found that I could do 300 of them in a minute, right? <laughs> Man, I'm really changing now right? So I don't know how this works your way. I don't know how it works your way. All I can tell you is what I've done. And all I can tell you is what I've shared with my coaching clients and the people I've worked with who've come back to me and say, wow, you know what? That really works. That really works. So by doing this every single day, you're invoking the tool of auto-suggestion. And for those of you who have done the Think and Grow Rich program with me, I've got a virtual program on Think and Grow Rich. You know, we've talked about the lesson on auto-suggestion. And just remember, if you've done that, you have lifetime access to those. And, and I suggest to you, after listening to this, go back and re-listen to the lesson on auto-suggestion. And I promise you, promise you, that lesson that lesson on auto-suggestion is going to be like on steroids after hearing this, right? So now as a side note, <clears throat> as a side note, okay, for my brothers and sisters in Christ, hear me, right? Please do not allow the word auto-suggestion to turn you away, right? Right? It, 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 it is a term that sometimes messes up my brothers and sisters in Christ, but do not allow that to turn you away, okay? All right, so <clears throat> I think it's worth just touching again, just talking about finding easier ways and or more comfortable ways to do the exercises because, you know, change is not going to be comfortable, is it? You know, it's not going to fit with who you currently are. Otherwise, you're not really changing. If it's fitting who you currently are, you're not really changing. So basically what I'm saying here is you're, you're currently in your comfort zone and, and here you're comfortable. So you think you're happy and everything's familiar and don't really need to think here, right? You can be on autopilot here. It's comfortable. So let's say, let's say your habits in here 
and everything's habitual. You can do it without even thinking about it. So it's easy, right? Your thinking spills out of your beliefs. So beliefs, uh, another kind of block or wall, right? So you have habits and you have your beliefs and these habits and beliefs keep you in your comfort zone where everything there is familiar, right? You can kind of just exist here and it's a, it's a bad spot. It really is, but it's familiar. So it's comfortable, right? <clears throat> the growth though takes place outside of here, doesn't it? You've got to get outside of the comfort zone in order to grow. When you step outside of your comfort zone, first of all, <laughs> first of all, you're going to get this horrible feeling where you hit the terror barrier and it's like, oh, hold on a second. I don't know if I want to do all this. I can't, well, I don't know if I can do this. I'm not good enough. I'm not sure I really want to do this, right? So is there a big enough reason is the question, right? So what happens is most of the time we just kind of bounce off boom, boom, we hit up against this terrier barrier and we step back into our zone of comfort. We step back into our comfort zone. And if you stay outside of this zone of comfort long enough, it's uncomfortable. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, my friends, that's actually a good thing. You want that confusion, don't you? Because inside the comfort zone here, you know, but outside you don't. You're confused outside the comfort zone and that's where the growth takes place. And if you're going to make a real change, you're not looking to do things that fit your current model in which is, which is inside your comfort zone. You're looking at doing something outside of that. That means it's going to be inconvenient. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's probably going to be frustrating and you're going to be confused and it's going to be costly too, right? It's going to be costly because it, and not just of your time, it's probably going to cost you some money probably. It's going to cost you some time and money. You've got to be committed because the easiest thing is just to boom, bounce off those barriers and step right back into uh, our zone of comfort and our zone of knowing and just carry on doing what, what you've been doing before. See, every single time I've done something new, every single time, whether it's opening up a new physical therapy clinic, uh, opening up a gym, building commercial buildings, building a speaking, coaching, training business, doing this, doing a Zoom call like this, every single time there's actually absolutely been a cost. And I'll, I, you know, I think you'll find the same for you too. So uh, this process that we're talking about, this process, your subconscious mind, I've, I've said it before, but it's very cunning because what it'll say is, no, you don't understand. See, I, I'm, I'm still doing the exercise like I was talking about. Uh, I, I'm still doing the extra exercise. So let me just say it like this. <clears throat> I have mentors and they were hosting this three hour workshop on purpose, vision and goals for the, for our John Maxwell team. Right. And one of the mentors said that anybody could just call in and read their purpose statement and they would kind of listen into it. So they would, so people on our team would call in, they would read their, statement and he would really listen into their words and as a coach I can tell you it's really good because it's not only really the words that are being spoken it's not just the words that that we're listening to it's listening and picking up on the energy and listening to the words behind the words right so this guy calls in and he reads this statement and I'm listening in on really how my mentor Paul is coaching and mentoring others because Paul tells this guy hey you're reading your statement. There's a word here. Kind of go back, kind of go back to that first sentence. And he says, I think you could pick a higher calibrated word. And immediately this person got defensive. He's like, well, blah, 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 blah. Right. But, but you don't know, you don't understand. And just blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm listening. And I, I just listened to Paul's response. And what he said was, well, you know what? Go ahead. You know, kind of, don't worry about it. Don't forget it. Forget it. Forget that I mentioned it. We're good, right? And, and what I know is that what you fight for, you get. What you argue for, you get. And the point that I'm, I'm just trying to make with you that is that, look, <clears throat> I know this is different. I know this may be outside of your comfort zone, but trust me, give it a shot and try it exactly like I'm telling you, exactly like I'm telling you. This, this is what I've done and how I've been mentored. This is how I've mentored other people. Here, here's what I've decided to do, right? For me, 
this is me. Here's what I've decided to do is I just agreed that I was going to do whatever my mentors told me to do. The way they told me to do it, the number of times they told me to do it until I found out that they were either crazy and nuts or that they're just lying to me. And they've been neither, right? They, they're they neither nuts nor are they lying to me. It, it's been uncomfortable, right? Uh, it's been uncomfortable. I don't think there's there's anything that they've told me to do that I'm just like, yay, I cannot wait. <laughs> I just can't wait to do that. And I'm telling you, this exercise sounds really fun. It sounds like I can't wait to get in and do it. But until you start to start to claim some I am that you ain't, <laughs> and still you, until you start to do that, there's some I am's that you're going to claim that there's absolutely, absolutely no evidence in your life of you being what you claim to be. There's no, none. You, you have no idea. Like, how am I going to be famous, right? Remember, I'm writing out, I'm an expert in leadership. I'm famous. I'm an international recognized speaker, coach, and trainer. I am rich. And here's the deal. I was none of those, but I had to claim my amnes first, right? Every philosopher, every theologian, industrialist, scientist says, be the change, be the change, be the change. This is a lesson on the creative power of your I amness, of you being that creative power. So <clears throat> In the self-image mastery program I have, it's, it's another online program, I give two exercises that will help you with this. And one of them is where you make a list of all the things or the people that are getting your results. All the things that they would do and all the things they do, right? You have, you have a to-be list, if you like, rather than a to-do list. Th these are the things I want to become. It's like your I am statements. And then you self see yourself, you visualize it, visualize yourself doing these things so it's kind of more of a <clears throat> more of a visual, visualization exercise you you close your eyes and you'd be comfortable you'd be relaxed and then you'd see yourself actually doing those things but you do it in two ways and one is you see yourself as a third party so you're, you're visualizing yourself you're watching yourself doing it and you're seeing yourself do these things and the other is is you're reliving it as if it's you're going actually going through it. So from your own point of view, so you've got two vantage points on your beingness, if you'd like, and it, it's really powerful. It really is. And when you add that to the affirmations and the I am statements, I mean, truly, truly powerful. And um, the last thing I just want to bring forward is when we enter into this process of claiming our I amness, um, do it slow right? Do it slow. Um, do it intentionally. And, and I would encourage you to record yourself, whether it's audio or visual, because your subconscious mind, your program mind, your ego-centered self-judgment, it's really cunning. It, and it will have you claim some I am's that are more future tense. And it sounds right, and, and it feels right. And you may even build the picture of you being that in the present tense, and then speaking I am in some form of a future tense. But I just, you know, I really encourage you to be be really intentional and be deliberate. Uh, go slow. And I, I think a really, you know, a really good goal would be your first time you sit down with this would, would be have about 25, right? I, I, I'd like to see you get get a lot more than 25, but I think 25 really is a good start. And um, you can think of it this way and, and start here. I'm kind, right? I'm loving, I'm forgive, forgiving, I'm also forgiven, right? I'm forgiven. That's an I am. I can be forgiving and I can also be forgiven. I can be loved and I can be loving. Two very different I am statements. And you'll find that, that in most of these I am statements that there are probably two or three ways that you can use the word and it'd be the same word, but, you know, completely different meanings. And <clears throat> again, just really want to reiterate this that none of this none of these processes are going to fit into your current model that's why they're called change and that that's why we need to go beyond our zone of comfort and uh it's worth it it really is isn't it, it it's hard work depending on how you frame it but it's effort and it's energy but it's worth it uh my friend i'm i'm just telling you that you are your only appreciable asset 
that you're ever going to have for the rest of your life. You are worth the investment. So uh, I, I just really want to thank you for your time. And I hope this has been a value add to you. This lesson has been complimentary, but it hasn't been free. It has a cost to it, right? And your cost is your time. And I hope it's been a worthy trade of your time. And for those of you that would like to share this lesson with friends and family, hey, feel free to do so. Many of you work in companies and many of you own your own companies and you're looking, you have maybe a staff meeting once a week or once a month and you'd like to be able to have a teaching lesson that you'd like to have your have uh, as your staff and many of you are parents and grandparents maybe you just like to have a family teaching that you'd like and if you'd like to be able to share this lesson or have me teach it to you and your team whether it's this lesson or any other lesson on um, you know uh, leadership personal growth communication just reach out to me by email at Corey C-O-R-Y at Corey Lee Leadership dot com and and i'd be happy to set that up i'd i'd love to add value to you guys again hope this is added value to you uh i hope it's i hope you'll give the exercises a shot i hope you have a great day and god bless thank you guys